Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are starting a whole new series on a new game. So, we're going to be playing some City Skylines. Now, this is honestly one of my favourite games of all time. I've probably played this more than any other game um, I've ever owned. But I've been sort of hesitant to jump in, because, um, you know, I actually consume a fair bit of City Skylines content myself. I, I watch, you know, channels like Biffa, uh, like City Planner Plays, Overcharged Egg, and, <laughs> you know, when you're watching all these fantastic creators, it can be a little bit daunting to think of doing creating yourself, because you're always going to be comparing yourself to, you know, those people that you wa enjoy watching. But I've decided to jump in and do it. So, let's have a little look at our map that we're going to be playing first of all. So, this is the, uh, largely is just the Northwood Hills map uh, from one of the DLCs. Can't remember off the top of my head which one it is. Um, but we've done a, a few little changes to it. So, first thing I've gone through is I've removed all of the default trees from the uh, map and replaced them with, like, you know, Aussie sort of species. As well as that, we've gone through all our motorways and actually replaced them with one-lane highways. Now, the reason why I've done this is that what actually drew me to this map was that it reminds me a lot of um, the sort of temperate rainforests you find in Australia, like looking at the Blue Mountains and the Southern Highlands, things like that. So I wanted to sort of do this as sort of a generic Australian-themed build. So let's jump in and let's get started. Um, I'm playing with a lot of mods. I'll try and get maybe a collection up of all the mods and assets I'm using, but there's quite a few of them. I actually went through before I started this and just completely deleted my mod collection just to start over. So hopefully, um, I haven't forgotten anything and hopefully nothing is in here that breaks um, the, the game or anything like that. But we're gonna start by going in here so we've got standard unlocks on so you need to you know draw a bit of a road to unlock anything so we'll just start off by doing that and what I want to start with in this city is sort of building this how you'd expect to see a um, an Australian city um, or an Australian small town in fact which is quite often a one-lane main road um, with all the shops everything like that on it um, and there's a lot of roundabouts as well, you see. So we're going to, straight off the bat, just plop down a roundabout here. Um, which will sort of be the start of the little CBD that we make for ourselves um, initially in this area. So nice, simple roundabout start with and from there we'll just lay down a bit of straight road and I'm thinking we'll go with some some just some gravel roads off that um, I am I'm not playing with unlimited money I actually usually do to be honest um, so this is sort of a new experience for me and I hope <laughs> I hope I don't run out of money too quickly we're just gonna get a little bit of a basic grid down though to start with and um, we'll go from there. Just a quick auto save there. And I guess talking about the sort of hierarchy of roads, oh, that is not, <laughs> that's not straight at all. Yeah, talking about the hierarchy of roads, this two lane road here would probably be sort of a collector almost. So we're going to limit the um, number of connections we have coming off that road. At least to start with anyway. But I think we've got a nice little bit of grid that we can just start working on. Um, and obviously once we've got some people in the town we start earning tax and stuff like that. Because we don't want to be running out of money. Um, what we'll do, we'll just pop a little water tower down in the middle of our roundabout. Nice and simple. And we probably want to start off with um, just a few windmills, to be honest. Um, I've accidentally hit play when I didn't mean to. <laughs> um, and I think looking at our, 
our um, wind, it looks like probably right here is going to be the best we're going to get for 8 megawatts. Let's connect that up to our water tower so we've got some water. And we'll just start laying down uh, bits of residential and get the game running as well. Um, we're going to keep our residential of this main road here and we'll lay down a little bit of light commercial to um, just to get things flowing a little bit and just a little bit more so we can hopefully join up with our, uh, our water tower there to get some power. Otherwise we can just draw a quick connection across here. like we're going to need to uh, cut a quick connection across here. We also need some sewerage actually, <laughs> which I completely forgot about for a second there. And that's fine, we can get started a little bit of a, a small um, sort of industrial area over on one side. Probably away from our starting houses, but we still obviously will need to connect up some power as well. We'll go with uh, just a small uh, water treatment plant here. Okay, and that should start serving our sewerage. Perfect. Fantastic. And hopefully this starts to uh, to fill out a little bit more as well. Um, so some of the mods I'm running with um, would be the uh, Population Revisited mod. So it's going to run a little bit differently than a, a vanilla game would in terms of um, the sort of life cycle we can expect from the city. But I've been playing with the Population Revisited mod for quite a while and I do find it quite good to play with. And we'll just run at three times speed just for a little while. Get the uh, population growing. everyone's week has been good and hopefully everyone's got some good stuff planned for the weekend um, it's another quiet one for us but obviously we've if you're in Sydney you'll know that some of the restrictions around are at, at the moment with our current lockdown are starting to be relaxed a little so hopefully should be able to um, get out for some outdoor recreation and some outdoor hangs with uh, the in-laws so that will be exciting um, also had a job offer during the week, so I'll be moving companies in you know a month or so. That's quite exciting, um, um, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the workload isn't too bad, so I'll be able to keep doing this uh, this content because I'm really enjoying being able to contribute to YouTube and um, play some of my favourite games for everyone. All right, um, and as I've been yapping on, I have failed to notice that we now need some industrial um, so probably try and just fill up these squares here I think we'll need to also yeah um, just increase our water network just a little bit as well to cover that off um, a lot of small towns in um, Australia and in New South Wales do have industry packed quite closely to residential um, and that, um, you know that's fairly normal I, I suppose just in general when you're starting a game in City Skylines you do need to have everything fairly close together so that's fine um, and how's our intersection going here so I've just done just before I started here I just did a little bit of um, work just setting up some roads um, and, and what you're seeing here that's actually fairly typical of how you get into a small town in our country New South Wales. We will need to fix our uh, priority roads though. You'd be giving way obviously coming off your T intersection here. 
but um, other than that, this sort of dedicated turning lane is what you can expect. Okay, now we've got a little bit of industrial, so our town's starting to grow a little bit once more. I'm really keen to to um, hopefully get this uh, this joined up here, so we can start to remove some of these power lines we've placed. We'll also place a bit more commercial down just in this region, just to buffer our uh, residential just a little bit as well. Start to pull back some of those uh, power lines. In fact, this one we still want. So that one we want to remove. Uh, what I might do as well, actually, is to turn off weather. Excellent. So two areas have joined up now, so we can remove some of these ugly power lines. As we continue to grow here, might lay down um, a little bit more gridding for some more residential as well. And there continues to be a bit of demand for industrial end. Excellent, we've uh, unlocked our first milestone, Little Hamlet. Um, so that gives us ability to control our taxes, which is fantastic. We can also take loans. And we've unlocked garbage, healthcare, and education. And really cool thing, I, I think anyway, about uh, City Skylines is that it sort of gradually moves you into needing to to provide these services before they unlock you don't need to uh to use them at all but once they have unlocked you're expected to to be providing those services to your citizens so let's have a look through so we've got healthcare, um so we can place down a medical clinic i've got two varieties available uh, we also have education which i I think we only have, yeah, so just uh, elementary or primary school available at the moment. We don't uh, need to look at high school until we have 1,300 people. And as well as that, um, garbage as well we need to be looking at. So a few things for us to start thinking about. Uh, no death care yet either, cool. Which is always a, a struggle when your citizens start dying. So what we're going to do, we're going to extend our main road just by a little bit, and probably just another two blocks or so. We're going to start preparing to uh, provide those services to our citizens as well. So how big is our landfill? So it'll fit quite well in our... Uh, our grid here so we'll just lay down a landfill to start with something nice and basic um, obviously you don't want to be using landfills forever uh, we've also got the recycling center I believe that is but landfills are nice and cheap to start with so no issues there we'll also have a look at what our options are in terms of getting a elementary school down I think this sort of European style I think it is anyway um, elementary school is probably good to start with and we'll try and locate that nice and central, I think. And just need a doctor's office as well. Um, and we'll go for, once again, this, I believe, European style one. We're going to place this near to our main road, but not loading onto it as well for traffic reasons. Okay, and that is all our infrastructure requirements at this point so we've once again just need to keep upgrading the city 
keep getting citizens in. So we can uh, continue growing. And we'll lay down a bit more industrial as well as we did have a little bit of a need for industrial there. Let's have a look at taxes and budgets as well. So how are we going for... Okay, so electricity, uh, we pretty much need another generator. So we might quickly lay that down while we're doing this. Um, don't want to remove the rocks. The rocks are pretty cool. Another 7 megawatts is fine. And our sewerage and water, we, we're way... Like, we've got heaps of capacity there. So what we might actually do to save some money is to reduce our budget there. And in terms of tackers... Ta <laughs> In terms of taxes, in terms of taxes, our taxes are actually quite low at the moment. So we might pop them up to 11% at the moment. I think you can go to 12 without them complaining too much. Um, but 11% is fine for now, and then I'll keep uh, funds flowing into the city as well. Oh, apparently 50%. No. Uh, um. Okay. What's what's happening here? Why aren't you operating? Okay. That's bizarre. What's what's the reason for that, I wonder? I mean, it's fine now, so I'm not sure. That was just a momentary blip. It's saying not operating, though. Strange. What about our water tower? Not operating. Hmm. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. I'm not sure if that's just a little bug or if something's gone wrong. buildings showing up here. Like white. I have to have a look and see what uh what buildings those are, because they're not really looking great, are they? I like this building though. I think this is a uh um, one of the assets I downloaded. Excellent. We've unlocked Worthy Village, 850 population. And once again, we've got some new services, um, new policies, new buildings, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also have some industry specializations that we can use as well. So let's, first of all, now that we've unlocked it, let's get a, a district laid down for our city at this point. So this is going to be one district at the moment. This is pretty much going to be what will be sort of a... Um, we're just going to call it Lorikeet Valley, which is the name of our city, and that's because at this point it, it's sort of functioning as the CBD. Obviously it's the entire city, um, but you've got like the main strip here with all, all your big businesses, or big-ish businesses on it. Um, so it makes sense to, to have it sharing the name of our city itself. Now, as well as that, we need to start worrying about fire protection. So once again, we're going to place our fire protection close to, but not on our main road. And try and get it fairly centrally located. We'll need to, um, unfortunately, destroy this building, but it is what it is, really. And we also have our police station as well. Which I'm thinking we might place down here on this side of the city. Probably just about time to add another uh, row onto our grid here. 
So we're moving now quite close to, to our river here, which is quite exciting. Um, I, I'd love to build something cool on here, like a um, like a cool sort of waterfront area or something like that. And obviously we can also bridge across to the other side of the uh, river as well. So that should be cool. should be almost ready to level up again as well. Uh, we are running out of power once again. And so it's probably going to be worth putting down an actual power plant at this point. Unfortunately, um, at this sort of early stage in the game, renewables only get you so far. Um, so we'll place down a coal power plant, which is it's pretty expensive. Um, but now that our production is going to be massive, we can also reduce the uh, budget as well. I do notice our water availability is starting to drop as well, so we do need to increase the budget there. But power we can put pretty much down to 50% at this point. Let's check. No, definitely not down to 50%. <laughs> um, 75 will be fine though. Oh, be careful. And there we go, tiny town. So here is where things start to get really cool and exciting. So we can do park areas, industry areas. Um, we can start to put in parks and plazas. So let's get started on that then, shall we? Let's have a look at our natural resources. What do we have here that we can use? So we've got a lot of fertile land and a bit of forestry as well, but probably farming um, would make sense for us to start with. That's uh, generally what you'd expect to see in sort of a normal country town here in Australia. We've got a massive fertile spot over there. And I believe we've also got, yeah, so we can purchase another block, which we're going to do. So we've got a big fertile spot over here. It's just up a hill. Where could we potentially connect that up? So we need to probably look to upgrade one of these roads into a, uh, just a regular sort of two-lane road and uh, pop it over the hill there. And I'm thinking Tony Road here is probably looking like a good um, option. I also want to rename this road Dixon Way, but apparently I can't. I'm potentially too close to the uh, border there. But we'll re rename this one. We're going to call it, call it Lorikeet Way for the moment, so it's our, our main road. Alright, and what we want to do is take a, a nice, easy sort of journey over the hill here. And it's looking like it actually might be a little bit of a challenge. Um, it is quite a grade we're looking at here, so it actually may not be the best option. I'm actually, now I've looked at that, potentially we need to take our road further this way and cut across this here, which is a little bit nicer of a grade. So we'll do that instead. Go with a nice sort of free-flowing road over the hill here. How's that look? Yeah, that looks nice. It's got a few uh, fallen trees and stuff we need to uh, remove the road. <laughs> okay, so let's get our sort of a grid-ish sort of thing planned here. Um, might go for a, one of these custom roads as well. And we'll just lay just a nice straight road to start with. Nice big one. Oh yeah, that's nice. I like that. And we want to paint an industry area as well. And we're going to give a pretty big industry area here. Okay. 
And we'll get a farm main building down as well. Excellent. And that automatically unlocks a few different small um, sort of options for us to look at. Some small fields, fruit fields and animal pastures. Let's have a look what we've got available here. We might go with a fair few crop fields to start with. Um, we also need electricity in this area as well, I should say. <laughs> um, but that's fine. We can connect that straight over the, uh, the ridge over to our power plant. Try and keep uh, water pipes pretty much under the road. Um, that's a little bit realistic, or a little bit more realistic, I should say. That's where they belong, as I uh, have been told many times by uh, City Planner Plays, if you watch his uh, videos. And let's get some, some of these fields laid down, just so we can have a look and sort of plan out what we're going to do here. So I'm thinking just some, some crop fields are probably good to start with. As we auto save and probably try and get a sort of a three or so a four let's go four wide it's gonna get a nice sort of tight uh, grid here with everything just pretty much fitting in exactly as it should like so we also need to just bring our water pipes, which don't snap to the road well because these are like one unit roads, whereas our water pipes sort of take up two units, but it's it's good enough. Anyway, this would all probably be if there were pipes flowing under these, which there wouldn't be anyway. Um, it's easy enough to dig up a field, so no issues there. What do we need to level up? So we need more workers and we also need more resources as well. Could also lay out some animal pastures which will help convert our crops into animal products. I think what we might do is just lay out some more um, crop fields. In fact, we've spent all our money. <laughs> That's no good. Uh, as, as I think I, I mentioned, I actually usually play with unlimited money on. Um, but I've decided to give um, a go with the actual budget. So we'll need to wait for a bit more tax income to come in. I'm looking at our city at the moment and we actually have some further need for um, some more residential. So we can, we can get a, another bit of grid laid down and uh, get some more residential in, which will mean some more taxes for us. So that is good news. Looks like we need a little bit more commercial, though we do still have some um, vacant lots for commercial use though, so we should be fine with that for the moment. down a bit more residential and then I think what we're going to do is start to consider where we could potentially lay down our first city park oh and we've uh, updated uh, upgraded our orchard as well which is excellent so let's have a look what we've got so we've got some uh, some production buildings as well as barracks as well so we'll have a look at that in a sec I just want to finish building out this bit of a grid. And we've got a little bridge there which we'll need to fix.
and we just want to once again get a little bit of commercial here just buffering this industrial area so our residents don't get too upset and our residential need has just jumped right up so probably just about the right time that we've uh, built out this little bit extra grid here Uh, it's, it's more or less under the road. <laughs> we'll pretend it's a, a curved pipe there. Okay, so let's have a look and see what options we have here for our industrial zone. So we've got a flour mill that we can use to produce some flour. Cattle shed for producing um, animal products. We've also forgot to place down our grain silos, um, which we probably do need a few of, because as you can see, we've got some errors or some warnings coming up that we don't have enough buyers for our products. So we might get down a few grain silos. Hopefully, we can start to fill up there. We're making a small profit, which is excellent. Um, let's change the name here as well. We're just going to call it Lorikeet Farms for the moment. Um, it's not unusual, at least here, for a, sort of a large farm in a community just to basically name themselves after the town they operate in. So. I think that is absolutely A-OK. -okay. And it might be time to start laying down a few um, pastures or some um, animal product producing buildings. So we've just got the one down at the moment, that's OK. We can come back and put down some more once we have a little bit extra money as well. I think this is um, looking pretty good for a starting town. I know it's uh, pretty boring and grid-like right now. Um, once we've, you know, taken a bit more income in, um, we'll be able to sort of free ourselves up to, to start doing some cool stuff with parks and landscaping and that sort of thing. But at the moment, we're just trying to get a nice, solid foundation for the, for the town. All right, and we've got a little bit extra cash now, so we might lay down... Um, Probably one more um, cattle shed. In fact, that's all we can lay down at the moment anyway. Tell you what, we might need to take out a loan here because we uh, we want to do a bit more development. So you've got to spend money to make money, right? Let's get a few more cattle sheds in. It would be nice to have a flour mill as well. Probably just the one. Which will pop over here. And we probably need to build a few warehouses as well. So we can pop a warehouse down to uh, handle our animal products and another one for our flour as well. I think I've selected, no, I selected flour for both of them. Okay, so we've got a warehouse yard down, so that'll decrease the pressure on our um, industries to immediately be exporting as soon as they've uh, produced what they need to produce. So that is good news there. And that will also greatly increase our demand for workers as well. So what I'm thinking we might do is slightly deviate from our grid pattern to give us something interesting to, uh, to use now that we're potentially looking to build our first park. And so what I want to do, I'm going to take out our main road up this far. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to um, build a straight road across here. So what we're doing in doing that, we've got this nice triangular lot that we can use to build a small city park. And we can also vary, start to sort of vary our grid now with um, uh, this grid at sort of a 45 degree angle to what we've previously had. 
So it'll start to add a little bit of interest into what we're doing. And gives us a nice little block of space here for our city. In our fire coverage, we probably do need to more or less lay down another fire department soon. Our crime rate is okay. Uh, healthcare is okay as well. Um, but we pretty much need a new primary school, which is good because we've got um, sort of a greenfield site here. So we're not going to need to acquire any land to be able to place that down. It's probably not connected up to power quite yet. No, but it is now. Okay. Uh, one thing I actually want to do here, um, we might upgrade our roads around what will be our park to um, some regular streets now. That'll save us uh, sort of damaging the park when we go to upgrade them at a later date. Okay. So we're going to place a city park down here. We'll create a little park area right here. Um, uh, we probably don't want our main gate on the on a Lorikeet Way. So we might put it over here on Briarwood Street, but we can place... Oh, and of course, um, we've unlocked stuff for our park as well. But we might put a small entrance on Lorikeet Way as well as on Webb Street here as well. Okay. Alrighty, and we want to level up this park, so we probably want to pretty much place down everything we uh, have access to at this point. I uh, might lay down some paths first. I might go with some bare paths here, um, so we can place some nice Australian... Um, some nice Australian trees on the path as well. Lovely. Let's get a plaza. Some restrooms as well. And we'll get an info booth down as well, of course. Okay, so this would be like a tourist info building, which I uh, don't know if they have them in the rest of the world, but it's like um, if you're traveling through the town and you want to know perhaps where to get something to eat or some good places to, you know, go see the sites. Not necessarily within the park itself, but in the whole town or even the whole region. Um, you would head to the sort of the tourist info um, building, which uh, you'll quite often see on just on direction signs all through the city or coming up to the city. So th this is what I imagine this would be here. Get some fences down. Yeah, we'll just do a little bit of landscaping. Smooth things out a little bit. And let's get some trees down. Oh, we've got power problems again, do we? Okay, that's alright. 
we can just uh, up our budget. Probably just back to 100% now. Let's have a look at some of our trees here. Lay down some nice gum trees around the place. And we'll get some lily pillies down as well. Excuse me, mate, what are you doing? That is not how you park. Come on, mate. Starting to want a little bit more um, commercial. So we will duly comply with the uh, community's wants and get a few more little commo uh, nodes of commercial down. our farm going? Total profit <laughs> minus 32. At this stage we probably want to empty our uh, flower and animal products because we're not doing anything else with them at this point. So that'll allow us to increase our profit a little bit as well. Looking here, it might actually make sense for us to uh, reroute this road to this one here. Um, oh, and we've unlocked another milestone. That is awesome. So once again, we get another um, square that we can unlock. And we also start to unlock a bit of public transport as well, as well as a lot of new policies, some new larger roads, lots of new larger roads. <laughs> and death care. So this is something we should look to uh, take care of straight away. Okay, so I, I was just talking about before that unlocked, um, potentially rerouting our road to the farms across to our established, uh, look, our other uh, upgraded road here, and that um, unlock of death care also makes me think that we could potentially stick our cemetery sort of here just across the road from our main park um, which would make sense I think like you could go see your departed loved one and you could go sort of spend some quiet time with the family afterwards if you wanted to you know relax and uh, and reflect unfortunately we're gonna have to remove this industry that we literally just um, ordered to be put there but it is what it is I'm just going to quickly pause so we don't break things too much. Uh, I might take it back with one more. Okay. We can unpause now. Cool. Alrighty, and for death care, so we've got a cemetery here. 
and I think, yeah, like right across the road from our, our park. I think that's a good idea at least. Um, we had Anarchy on, so... <laughs> Need to remove those buildings. And you can go next door and get pancakes as well if, if that's what helps you to, to relax and reflect. Just thinking on um, potentially what tile we could buy next. And I think um, probably we want to buy this tile next. Uh, the reason for that is we can then um, build a second uh, intersection with our highway, which will give us that redundancy. It should, like a, an accident, have occurred on, on one entrance to our town. We can redirect our residents through that detour if they want to access the highway. So I'm just going to buy that one now. And just need to think about how we would get the uh, our road to join out there. So we'll think about that for a bit. But at the moment, we need to be laying down a bit more housing as well. So one thing um, I've noticed about the Population Revisited mod is that obviously you have a lot less um, residents in each dwelling. So your housing demand is so much higher than it is. Um, with the, the sort of vanilla handling of um, residences and the like. And that's, that's all right to me. I, I, it sort of allows you to have some, a little bit more suburban sprawl, I think in cities to have that increased demand for um, dwellings. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And for our main road here, we're pretty much now going up a, a hill. So it probably makes sense for us to start curving this road around a little bit rather than uh, continuing to go straight there. Um, and potentially we could even look at crossing the river here as well, but um, don't need to do that right now. I've not just noticed almost by accident, uh, this curve lines up pretty decently with our, our new sort of grid we've um, put in here. So that's, that's good. Um, and that really helps with the connectivity as well. So we'll continue laying down a bit of commercial on this main road. And we can fill in the rest with residential as well. So we've got a little bit extra cash. Um, so we can probably lay down another flour mill, I think. Because we've got, you know, we've got no shortage of crops that are completely full. So flour mill will serve us well. well allow us to continue making profit. We're going to turn off Anarchy as well. Nice. And finally, I think the last thing we'll do this episode, um, we'll get to our second um, entrance from the highway set up. So it's just going to be a simple junction like this. We don't need a motorway or anything like that at this point. Um, though later on, potentially we might look to upgrade if we need to. But it'll be nice and simple. So what we're going to do again, similar to what's what we've got up here, we're going to place, if we can at least, I hope we've unlocked it. <laughs> um, yeah, perfect some four-lane two-way highways. Place down here and here. Get an asymmetric road here. Cut our node. Just one length there. And then down to a regular highway, which we'll use to we'll skirt around this hill here. I 
went around the back of our farm and I think we'll join up at that point there. And what we might do as well is just reroute that a little bit as well, I think. Might change it to a country road as well, which is probably a bit... A bit more sort of realistic what, to what you'd actually see. Nice. Um, cool. So we've got that set up. We'll just do some lane mathematics over here so everything flows nice and easily. Um, why are you here still? I think I've got a mod installed that I potentially don't want to have installed that's keeping those uh, um, dialogues up when they shouldn't be. And we'll just put on our preset we set up here for the, uh, for the junction as well. Nice and easy. And immediately we've got some, uh, some trucks using it, which is great news. Okay, so with uh, that second entry to the town setup, I think that's pretty much all we're going to have time for this week. So this has been the first episode of my Lorikeet Valley series in City Skylines. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, uh, as I said at the start of the video, <laughs> there's a lot, of trepid uh, a lot of trepidation involved in doing this because I watch so many um, creators with fantastic City Skylines content and I can absolutely say that my content is nowhere near as good as theirs. But if you've enjoyed it, please let me know. Um, feel free to suggest things like names for our districts, street names, things like that, and I will add them into the game. And if there's something specific you think we should work on in the next episode, let me know. But until next time, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. I'm Bob Dendry, this is City Skylines, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.